He's heard it all before. You're a pastor. You're not supposed to get political. You shouldn't be talking about these issues, so just stay out of politics and stick to preaching the gospel. Life, marriage, sexuality, borders, ethnicity, these things aren't political. They're biblical. God's Word has much to say about the culture we're living in. This is Our Watch with Tim Thompson. Well, good Sunday morning to you. I am Tim Thompson, Senior Pastor of 412 Church in the Temecula Valley. And as always, I'm here with my co-host, Pastor Jake Porter. He is the youth pastor at 412 Church there in Temecula Valley. Pastor Jake, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I am doing outstanding. So many good things going on in the world, and we've got the Word of God that's guiding us through all of that, the Spirit of God empowering us to be who He's called us to be. Amen. So it's it's awesome. Um, we're going to talk about a very prevalent sin in the church today. It's not just um, in the church, and in, in, it's all around the world. I mean, we're, we're dealing with this, that, that idea of all roads leading to having the sin of universalism. You've seen it with, with America's youth. Um, and and it's all around. Yeah, yeah, it's all over the place. Especially younger people in America, uh, they're they're getting for some reason this idea that okay, I can do whatever I want. Everybody ends up in the same place at the end. It's okay, um, and and they're buying into a lie. Is the is right. the truth about it? Right. Yeah. They they don't know objectively how to look at things, and of course, yep. we find the objective view in God's word. So we we preached on this. Uh, I preached to the adults, as always. You pro- preached to the youth, and we bring the same message, just you know, on different levels. But we're trying to make sure that people can objectively tackle these issues. And so we preached on that. We want to share a quick clip of that, and then we'll discuss it. So uh, if you would out there in the world, take a listen to this. Turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13. We're going to tackle this very prevalent sin in our culture, the idea that all roads lead to to heaven, The, the idea that as long as you're a good person and you believe in something, then you're going to get there. And we're going to find in the scriptures today that's simply not true. Um, But let me just define universalism. It is the heretical doctrine. Now, when I say heretical, I mean that it's a doctrine that's heresy. In other words, it's contrary to God's word. It leads people away from a right relationship with God. So it's the heretical doctrine that emphasizes the universal fatherhood of God and the final salvation of all souls. So everybody, in other words, everybody gets saved at the end. Everybody's going to go to heaven, and God is the universal father over all people. And again, we're going to look objectively at these things. Is God objectively, is he the father of all people? Well, we see in John chapter 1 that in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. So that's talking about Jesus. It says in the beginning he was there, that he created all things. And then in, it goes on in John chapter 1 to say that as many as received him, that is received the word of God, who is Jesus, as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. Okay, it's to the people who receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They're born again. They have the Spirit of God in them. The ones that receive Jesus, they're the ones that become the children of God. So the idea of God being this universal Father over all people is not true biblically. When we look at it objectively, God is Father to those who are born into his family, were adopted in, were grafted in, right? We're adopted into the family of God, and he then becomes our heavenly father. Until that born-again process takes place, we are not the children of God. It's just not biblical. Um, so the, the idea of universal fatherhood and God loves all people and eventually will save all people, regardless of what they believe in, is just not True. And some people actually extend this out. The, the doctrine of universalism even morphs into what's known as the doctrine of, um, I'm going to butcher this word every time, um, apocatastasis. apocatastasis. Um, the idea of that is not only is God going to save all people, but even all created beings, including the fallen angels, which would include Satan. 
So people actually extend it out to that, that God's a loving God and he's just gonna save everything and everyone and, and eventually, doesn't matter, everybody's gonna get into heaven. It's simply biblically not true. We're gonna share that in God's word today. So if you're a note taker, I'm gonna give you four takeaways. These are four things we need to know about the sin of universalism. The sin of universalism. So um, we wanna tackle these four things. We wanna get through them really quick, but we wanna share right away the, the parable that Jesus spoke uh, when he was talking about this topic that we're talking about today. Now, a parable is an earthly story, gives a heavenly meaning. Matthew chapter 13, he shares this parable. It's the parable of the wheat and the tares. Pastor Jake, what does this parable say? Uh, well, starting in verse 24, it says, Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So, verse 27, the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. That is a whole mouthful right there, yep. of what you just said. And, and a lot of times people can read that and go, oh, my gosh, what is God, what is God talking about? And, and we wouldn't be alone in that. Of course, his disciples said the same thing in verse 36. They went after the multitudes went away. They, they came to Jesus, they said, explain to us the parable of the terrors of the field. Like, we want to know what you're talking about, Lord. Yeah. We, we don't get it. And Jesus answered them in verse 37. He says, he who sows the good seed is the son of man. And we're going to find in verse 36, our, one of our first points that we want people to really walk away with today is that universalism is a heresy because God's word tells us that there's only two types of people in the world. Yeah, there's only people who are going to heaven, and people who are not going to heaven. There's yeah. God's kids and everyone else, and it's that simple. Verse thirty-eight says, "The field is the world; the good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one." Um, this is this is showing us right here that that there's only two types of people. Now, that's not a topic or a. a that's not a principle in God's word that people are real excited about. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that even extends far beyond this type of conversation. You know, our world wants to take what God created as two genders and turn it into 72 or whatever it is now. No, now know, it's infinite. Now it's infinite. infinite whatever number. Right. Yeah, whatever it is. You know, people don't like the fact that it's black and white. It's this or that. You're going to heaven or you're going to hell. There's two types of people and, and people don't like, uh, like, that. I right. don't like the truth. Right. Yeah, well, because they, they want to say, well, I'm a good person, and, and my grandma, she was a good person, and my neighbor, they're, they're a good person. Why can't they go to heaven? Yeah. Well, they, they can if they get covered by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, they can if they'll accept God's free gift of grace, but some people just aren't willing to accept it. They don't yeah. want to admit that they're a sinner, and that's if you can't admit to your being a sinner, you can't repent of your sin and turn yourself and give yourself over to holy God and accept his free gift of salvation, well, then you're not going to go to heaven. It's exactly. that simple. You've you've either said yes to Jesus or you haven't. Yeah. And and that's that's a hard pill to swallow. The second thing we want people to know is this: universalism is definitely a heresy because he's going to separate one group from another. He's told us this in his word. Verse thirty nine says that the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Now, the end of the age. What is the end of the age? What is the, what is the Lord talking about here? Well, people have to go back to Daniel chapter 9, the 70 weeks prophecy of Daniel. Mm -hmm. There's going to be the end of an age. What age is Jesus talking about? It's the age of the Gentiles. It's also known as the age, the church age or the age of grace. It's the, the age that we're in. So when Jesus died, he set up the, the age of grace. He set mm -hmm. up the church age. Uh, there on the day of Pentecost, the, this loose-knit group of people goes up into this upper room, and the Holy Spirit comes upon them, and they walk out of church. The church was birthed. And from that point forward until 
till the end of that time, which is the you know when Christ comes back. From that point forward, there was the church, and people were saved by the grace of God. And there's going to come a point in time where God does come back, and He's going to separate out the true believers from the false believers. And we're watching that happen right in front of us. The question is, how is that going to happen? And this is something that a lot of people don't even like talking about. Yeah. You're, you've been talking about it with the youth. You've been teaching prophecy. I, I don't know any other youth pastor that teaches prophecy <laughs> to the to the youth, but you've been doing this, and, and there's this understanding that there will be a rapture at some point. We talk about the separation that's taking place. It's happening all around us right now. Yeah. You know, I think, uh, yeah, prophecy is an un- unpopular thing, especially with youth. And I think it, it's so important because you look at the times that we're living in now, it's like, okay, well, how do you explain the things happening around us? Well, it's founded Bible prophecy, right? And Bible prophecy includes what we're talking about here. You know, Daniel, that's prophecy. It's going to talk about these future events that are going to happen where there will be a time of separation. And this is kind of one of the big things that I want students to open their eyes to. And, and for anybody listening, you know, same for you or your kids, you know, open their eyes to the fact that the, one of two things is going to happen. You're either going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. And sometimes people think, oh, that, well, that's a harsh, oh, you could, you know, why, why are you being so mean to me? You know, and, and sometimes for explaining that to a junior high kid, they're like, oh my gosh, like, okay, that was kind of harsh. But it, I, I'm sorry, it's the truth. It, it is a little bit if you, if you take it that way. But, you know, you have to understand from even the youngest age that, okay, there's two places that I have the opportunity to go. Am I going to accept Christ or am I going to live like the rest of the world and live a life for myself? Right. And, you know, the Lord said when we come to the end of that age that, that he's going to do a work of separation. Yeah. True believers, false believers, his kids, not his kids. And we're seeing that right now. In fact, the whole world sees it. They just don't, they can't, like, they can't put their finger on it. They don't understand it. Yeah, they don't understand what's going on. Um you even hear it in the news, like, oh, we're polarized. We're, we're a polarized nation. Like, okay, understand, when you say polarized, what I hear, because I know what the Word of God says, what I hear is God has begun a work of separation. There's only two types of people, God's people, not God's people. Yeah, It's that simple. And, and the world calls it polarized. We call it the end of the age. Yeah, We call it, this is the time where God is doing the work of separation and that's all there is to it. Yep. So it's, it becomes, as you understand Bible prophecy, it becomes very clear God has begun the work of separation. Um, there's this concept of progressive prophetic revelation. The idea is as God unveils his prophetic timeline, he doesn't often do things just like in a snap, just like, okay, it's done. What he does oftentimes is he unveils what he's doing, and over the course of several years, and even sometimes decades and centuries, over that time, he unveils what he's doing, yeah. and we're seeing that right now. God's begun separating, and, and it's becoming clearer and clearer. We've seen over the last two years the separation on a fast track. Yeah, You're either for him or you're against him. You either love his commands or you don't. Um, you, like you brought up gender. You know, I mean, it's just like these things, it, it's, be, it's become so clear. Mm-hmm. You, can, you can walk into a room, have a conversation with somebody for about three minutes, and you know, like, okay— we're like-minded or we're not. Yeah. We love God or we don't. You know, and and even amongst people within the church, you know, you're seeing you're seeing the the false believers. See, that's one thing it says that, that they're going to grow up together. Mm-hmm. You know, don't don't uproot one with the other. Just let them all grow up. You're going to have true believers and false believers, and we'll God's like, hey, I'll deal with it at the end. We'll separate out. You'll know. Yeah. You'll know who the true believers were and the false believers. Um, the third thing we want is is this universalism is a heresy because God's word says that the people not filled with his holy spirit will be sent to hell. He he doesn't shy away from the the truth that there is a place called hell. He created this place. He did not create it for humanity. He created it for Satan. Mm-hmm. Um however, people who do not submit themselves to his godship they're going to end up in that place called hell. It says in verse 40, therefore as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. Again, this is the church age. Uh, It's very clear, burned in the fire. Where does people think that is? It's in a place called hell. It says in verse 41 that the Son of Man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire. 
That's scary talk right there. There will be wailing, or some versions say weeping, mm -hmm. and gnashing of teeth. When I think of gnashing of teeth, like what the the picture that comes in my mind is Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, when when he's he's like ah, you know that that Arnold, you know, he just had this ability to gnash his teeth on camera and just pretend because he was acting, but just pretend like he was in so much pain or he's striving or struggling so hard. Ah, that that's the gnashing of teeth. And there's going to be a point in time where people will end up in a place called hell where they're going to be weeping and gnashing their teeth. And this is why, like, when, when people say, well, why are you saying these things about why can't I just live how I want? And you're telling me that, that I'm wrong. You're so full of hate. It's like, listen, I am nothing but love when I tell you these things. Yeah. I have zero hate for you. In fact, the person who won't tell you you need Jesus, they're the ones displaying hate yeah because they they're not willing you don't matter enough to that person for them to share the truth with you for them to bring you to eternal salvation and have life in a place called heaven yeah. where there's no more weeping and no more crying and no more fears and no more tears yeah that's the most loving thing we can possibly do is share the truth about heaven and hell with somebody to share the truth that, hey you know if you keep going down that track this is where you're going to end up in a place into the furnace of fire where there's going to be wailing and gnashing of teeth. And when you consider what, you know, like you're talking about, wailing and gnashing of teeth, like that, it's absolutely miserable. A complete eternal life of misery where it's just you're literally crying out, weeping and gnashing your teeth. And you explain that to, to people. And, and again, yeah, they take it offensive sometimes. But that's the most loving thing you can do is share the truth with somebody. Right. And I think too many people are getting scared of sharing the truth in fear of offending somebody. Right. And it's like, that's the most loving thing you can possibly do for somebody. They might be offended by it, if that's how they choose to receive it, but right. you're still and, loving them. Here's a fact. You know, the Bible says that it, it is an offense. The Word of God is an offense to the people that are perishing. You yeah. know, it's it's offensive to tell somebody you're wrong, Yeah, how you're living, because they the, the rest of the world tells them that it's okay. Live however you want. You be you. You know, and, and the fact is... We're not supposed to just live however we want. The Bible is replete with stories of, of men and women who did things that were right in their own eyes. Yeah. And every time they did what was right in their own eyes, they failed. Every time they did what was right in their own eyes, their civilization crumbled. And God had to come in and get rid of the sin and deliver them from their sin and give them new rulers because everything had gone to hell in a handbasket, yeah. you know? And so, so it's important to to open ourselves up to truth, be willing to speak truth, no matter how offensive that truth is, uh, and draw people to a loving God. Like you said, it is the most loving thing you can do. And I think we, as a culture, we've gotten so conditioned to not want to offend anybody with truth that that we've kept our our mouths shut, we're silenced. And I think the world right now, in fact, I know the world right now needs leadership. Yeah. You know, the youth pastors. I mean, I have not seen a youth pastor like you. I'm not trying to puff you up with pride, but I haven't seen a youth pastor like you that's willing to teach prophecy. Like, hey, look around. Look at look at the condition of the world. Why are we in this condition? And because it's in this condition, what can we expect is coming? You know, so as you're teaching these things, these these very prophetic issues to the youth, what are you seeing? How are they responding? I mean, we have a mature congregation by large, you know, and, and thanks to great parents and, and they've raised their kids well. And I, and I think their eyes are, for the most part, open to a lot of this stuff. But, you know, a lot of them haven't sat down and really studied Bible prophecy. So that brings a different aspect to it. And what it's, what it's doing, from what I've seen, is really motivating them to want to engage with other people around them. Like, for example, just last night, there was a, a young middle school girl that um, she kind of comes up every couple of weeks and she's like, you know, I'm just like, I'm, I'm trying to share with my friend. I'm trying to share with my friend. We're talking about prophecy. And she's like, well, what if I, I keep trying to share these things with her? And if she doesn't accept it, like what happens? Like what happens when the rapture comes? What happens when these things start to unfold? And and what it's they're they're gaining this deeper understanding of, OK, what is really the end times look like? You know, and, and one of the most intriguing things that we've talked about is Matthew 24 like okay what things are going to be happening as what 
like as things get to the return of Christ. You know, right. we talk about the labor pains of, of these different events that are going to happen, and they they are realizing like, okay, we are. This is all around us. Right. They're like, if this isn't the time we're living in, I don't know what is. Right. And I and I'm glad that God's word's opening their eyes to the times they're living in and and preparing them for what's to come. Right. You know, a lot of people kind of shy away from teaching Bible prophecy because they'll say, well, you know, people have been saying this for so long that you know that the Lord's coming back and he he hasn't come back yet, and they don't understand the dichotomy that God has left us in. You know, when Jesus left, he, he left us in this weird dichotomy where we have to live two ways simultaneously. We live, on one hand, we live as though he's coming back right now, the doctrine of imminency. He's coming back right now. What that does is it instills in us this, this sense of urgency for personal holiness. Like, if he's coming back right now, I better not be doing something stupid, you know? Yeah. So, so it's this sense of urgency for personal holiness and urgency to share our faith like you're talking about this students like well what happens well what happens is they go to hell you know that's that's what happens so we don't want that so it's urgent to share the message of the cross but on the same hand simultaneously we live as though he's never coming back in our life which means we plan for retirement we raise up godly kids and grandkids like we want to leave, leave a legacy right so so we're living both ways simultaneously this is how Jesus left us and this is how we have to live, and, yeah. and there's really no alternative. If you live just as though he's coming back right now and not as though he'll never come back in your lifetime, what happens is people do really stupid things. They sell off everything, and they just sit there, and, uh, you know, they don't yeah. they don't know what to do. So they end up not planning for the future. And then there's some people who say, ah, he's not coming back. I'm just going to plan for the future. And then they never have some sense of urgency to be holy. Yeah. They don't share their faith because oh, I got time. You know, I'll share I'll share my faith with my mom later because we got time. Like, look, tomorrow is promised to no man. Yep. You know, so we have to know that. Um we we got one final point we want our audience to know and that's this. Universalism is heresy because God's word says that only those who are filled with his spirit enter the kingdom of God. Now, verse 43 says that the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And I would say that to everybody that's tuned in right now is if you have ears to hear, let you hear. What the Word of God is saying here is that, look, there's going to come a point in time where we get to shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Like, I'm excited for that time where I get to shine forth. Now, do I get to shine forth because I've been awesome? <laughs> no. Um, in fact, I've been a wreck and, and I know that. See, that's the thing is it has nothing to do with how well we perform. It has everything to do with how perfect Jesus is. Yep. And so because of that, he's put a spirit in me. He's put a spirit in you. We get to shine forth. How awesome is that? Yep. John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Most important thing, there is one way, one way to heaven. Yeah. One way to God. Right. Not your truth, not my truth, not all this other garbage it is the truth the there truth. is one way right you know yeah that's this is this is the sin of universalism that all roads lead to heaven yep. there there's many ways but it's very clear like you said John 14:6 he's the way he's the truth he's the life you're not going to get to heaven unless you go through him it's that simple Amen. and people can can try to tell you that that there's many ways they would be lying. Um, they'd be lying or ignorant. Uh, there's only one way. And, you know, you look at all these world religions, if either either they're all right and Christianity's wrong or Christianity is right and all the rest of them are wrong because Christianity is the one thing that says this is the only way. Yep. And so that that's the options. All the rest of the world religions are, are awesome. Christianity is the fraud or it's the other way around. And I, I would submit to you, it is the other way around. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. I pray that our audience loves him, submits themselves to them. Uh, we are out of time today, but Pastor Jake, always a pleasure to share the word of God. Um, you, you're, you're an incredible youth pastor. Grateful to have you. Uh, grateful to have our audience. God bless you. We will see you next week. This has been a production of Our Watch with Tim Thompson. We hope you are encouraged to engage the culture around you. We want to invite you to connect with Pastor Tim by going to the Connect page on ourwatchnow.com. That's O-U-R 
watchnow.com. Until next time, this is all of us at Our Watch reminding you to be bold, be strong, and to take back the public square.